Isaiah chapter number 7, which would, the seventh book of the Bible would be Judges. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, and that's our main focal point, Judah and Jerusalem of Isaiah, that's where his ministry is, that Razan, the king of Syria, and Peckham, 2 Kings 15.25, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up towards Israel to war against it, but could not prevail against it. So here you have a Syrian army, and you have Israel, northern Israel, coming into Jerusalem and Judah to fight. The nation's been split. Been split since Rehoboam. Then you got a civil war. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is a confederate, united, allied with Ephraim. Um, that's another tribe of Israel. That's one of the sons of Joseph. So you got northern Israel and you got Ephraim. They're going against Judah and Jerusalem. You got a, a, a family against family here that, you know, there are ten tribes up north. There's two tribes down south, and here Ephraim is joining in. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood were, excuse me, are moved with the wind, swaying. Trees normal move is not, you know, swaying back and forth. Is to be upright. And maybe moved of the wind, it could be even broken down. And if it's broken down with the wind, it, it's not a good clean cut. It's it's a jagged cut. But they are going against the people and the place where God is. Northern Israel had gone into sins. They got the golden calves, and they're the they're the second group of Israel to go into captivity. Uh, Reuben, can't think of the, the two and a half tribes that get the land in Jordan on the other side of Jordan. They go to captivity first. The ones that did not go over the promised land, that Moses gave them the land of Jordan on the east side, they go into captivity. Northern Israel goes into captivity secondly, and Judah will go into captivity third. You gotta know it's in the Bible three the number three that keeps happening. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz. Now this is the king of Judah. Thou and Shear Joshua, thy son. Well, does Isaiah have a son? Does he have a child? It's named right there. And the meaning of his name is said to be, and raiment shall return. At the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. It's a graveyard for the poor people. Go to this place that is man-made. Conduit is, is, is a water acting duct of the upper pool in the highway, all man made area. Go to the specific place in thy son and say unto him, This is King Ahab. Not saying unto his son, he's saying, Take your son and go to Ahaz, and this is the message. Take heed and be quiet. Don't listen up. Shut up. Listen up. 
Shut up. That's what you should do every time the preacher talks. Listen up. Shut up. Fear not. Wait a minute. I got, I got this army of Syrians coming. I've got Israel coming. I got Ephraim coming. What do you mean? Don't fear. Neither be faint-hearted. We got these armies are coming against me. For the two tails of these smoking firebrand. For the fierce anger of risen with Syria and of the son of Remaliah. They just smoke. They're smoking. They're not fire. Their fire brains have been in the fire and now they're out and all they're doing is smoking. You don't need to worry. Eventually smoke will dissipate. Be gone. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the sons of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Alright? God's going to tell you what the enemy is thinking and saying. Listen, when Esau said, I'm going to kill my brother, it was told to Rebekah. It said that those words were in his heart. Jesus, his, his entire life, he perceived what the people were saying, thinking. Or what they were saying that no one heard. God is able. And you need to realize that the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the, the evil and the good. Just because you say it quiet in your little closet, your little room, and no one can hear you, God knows and God heard. This is what they're saying. Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us. Let's break the place down and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. Let's go in there and let's destroy the city and let's put our own king there. Thus saith the Lord God, now God speak, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Samaria is Damascus. Uh, well, the head of Syria is Damascus. So what's the capital of Dama uh, Syria? Damascus. And the head of Damascus is Raisin. Who's the king of Damascus? Raisin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken. He told Abraham, Cursed be he that curseth you, and blesses he that blesses you. And Ephraim, even though he's inside the, 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 the tribes, he curses the blessed people of God. Second Kings 17.4, you'll find this. Ephraim in one of the minor prophets is spoken about. Ephraim's joined the idols, let them alone. Jose, I believe that is. Ephraim is the ones that uh, the Mormons say they are from. You want to be a part of a group that went against God's people? The head of Ephraim is Samaria. Now Samaria is that is that capital city that was built up. After the nation split into two, Jerusalem being the capital of Judah, Samaria being the capital of Israel. Which later on becomes the Samaritans, where they're half-breeds, half-Jewish and half-Gentile. And the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So there's a war being planned against you, king. There are people against you, king. Trouble is sprewing, king. Don't worry. It's not going to happen. And there are things in our life that we need to come to realize if all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There may be times in your life that you see a battlefield coming up. And you're even warned. 
hey, these people are against you. This per this church is against you. This the police department are against you. The the, the city council is against you. Uh, the the state is against you. The, the laws are against you. And God will send somebody into you, into your assembly, your church, your gathering. Don't fear. I've got it all under control. And when it's done, you'll have the victory. You'll praise me. You'll give me the glory. Don't worry. And that's what we see here. And the trouble comes from within the family. When I mean family. I'm not talking about brother against brother and sister against sister and mother against child and all. That. I'm talking about you've got the 12 tribes here. You've got 10 tribes against two. And then add another one. They're all blessed by God. They all have that, uh, that uh, Abrahamic covenant. They all have, you know, I, I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. And they are attacking each other within each other. I mean, I don't know how you would feel as a king. When the people who are attacking you are your own family. And they're attacking you to remove you, verse 6. They're just not coming in and going to loot the place and, and, and take spoil. They're going to set up another king. And how many churches have that? Bible believing churches have that happen. They raise up the, this group of people and vote the pastor out who loves the Lord and wants to do right. I can think of one illustration that's happened and the pastors moved on successful. And the church, they've been every other kind of church that can be and any kind of pastor that can be and they're not doing nothing. They came to naught. It is going to happen. You will have enemies. There is no difference of Isaiah 7, of what we just read, than you read in uh, Nehemiah. It's just the Arabians. There's no difference between the life of David. It, it's not the Arabians, it's the Philistines. You are going to have battles. You're going to have uh, armies against you. That's why God is giving you armor. And it's not really the people. It's Satan behind the thing. These kings that are mentioned, Rezin and Pekah. Satan has come up to him and said, Hey, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you this kingdom. Yeah, all right. Now, whatever Adolf Hitler did to get the rule of Germany was definitely under the, the realms of Satan. Go get those people. But what do you learn from Isaiah 7 and the history that recently happened in the world? Adolf Hitler is dead, probably in hell. And the Jews are still living and making more Jews. And there are probably more Jews today since Adolf Hitler, since World War II. I'm counting those who are alive and those who have just been born and those who have died. There are probably maybe more Jews than what he killed. And those are God's people. We are the children of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. We got powers and uh, powers and principalities and spirit in high places fighting us. Satan does not approve of what we're doing if we try to live godly. But guess what? We got our own family members that fight in us. And I'm not talking about mom or dad. I'm talking about our own flesh. You may have reason the Syrian come in and fight you. Okay, outside. You may have Pika, your own family, but you got Ephraim, the flesh, steps in and joins the battle.
And in those battles in life, God would just come up and say, listen, you know what? Let me tell you something. Do you know what the fruit of the Spirit is? I say fruit singular because that's what the Bible says. Uh, yeah. And what is one of the fruit? Peace. That's it. Don't worry. Don't be faint-hearted. The worst thing the enemy can do to you is get you to heaven. Get you to glory. Fox's Book of Martyrs. The enemies went in there and killed saints left and right, left and right. And God says in Psalms, you know what? The death of the saints pleased me. Or you get the battle, you win the battle, you're alive, and you keep serving God. You still keep earning crowns. You still, hey, I got a testimony. And people all around you look like, how did that, how did you do that? Because God told me not to fear. God told me not to be faint hearted because what's going to happen to my life? Nothing's, nothing's going to happen. We will have battles, and there will be losses. There will be winnings. There will be, uh, you know, time out. Set back, regather. Get back on your knees, pray while the enemy gets back, and, and we... And, Build up their forces. You know, Solomon is the only king in Israel's history, and maybe the world, that had peace, complete peace. But in that peace, he defiled God by going after other gods. Trials and tribulation for a Christian, for a man of God, would be get on your knees, concentrate to God, and no nothing else, nothing, no other things. Keeps your mind on God, and keeps you on your knees, and keeps you God. And you're, you, I don't have time to look for anything else. And it's funny how they have this whole thing at the Fuller's Field, the graveyard of the poor. What a place to meet. You imagine meeting a graveyard. You know, here's here's the prophet. You're the you're the president of the United States, and he calls you down to the to the graveyard. And here's his son. And he's like, well, I know you, Isaiah. I know you're the prophet and all that. What do you got for me? He's looking around on the grave like, oh boy, this is where I'm going to be. And he tells him, he says, you know what? We're going to go in there. We're going to destroy this city. We're going to set up the son of Tabeel. Verse six. Okay. This is a great illustration. I'm going to die. Here I am in a graveyard. And you're telling me not to fear. You know, God, I want to say this. I don't know how to say this. God's a supernatural kind of God. He can do anything of the most weirdest situations and, and get glory. You read the life of his prophet, what he had them do. He has one walk barefoot and naked. He has one, he, he's wearing a, a yoke of oxen around his neck. He has another one, you know, sleep on this side for seven and sleep on that side and make a little pan, a little army men and all that. And, and for, the, for the Christian, he tells us, he says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Uh -huh. And he turns around and, tells, and, and he has Paul say, Paul, I want you to write something. What? He goes, it's so foolish to go out there and preach. It's so foolish to stand there on that little little parking island and preaching to a bunch of people who don't want to hear it. That's foolish. And Paul says it's foolish. Ah! And they'll come up, what is he yelling at me for? I'm not yelling, breaking my voice up. We are doing the same thing the prophets are doing. You stand on the street corner. You go to knocking on people's door. And you're doing exactly what Isaiah is saying. You're doing exactly what Jeremiah was told to do. Nothing new under the sun. You 
we are set here. Cause we're we're not gonna go any further. We're going to a great part of this chapter. But you need to rest assured as a Christian. Battles are coming. Battles may be present right now. Some of them, God's going to give you the peace. Before it even happens. This one doesn't even happen. you got to fight. And that takes you over to your armor that God's given us. you got to know how to wear it and you got to know how to use it. Sometimes you just got to take heed and shut up. Take heed and shut up and let God speak and let God do. And we're going to get one of the greatest signs, one of the greatest prophecies to be fulfilled in the Bible. And up to this point, and then verse 10, verse 11, Ahaz doesn't say nothing to verse 12. He's done what Isaiah said. He's done what God told him. Shut up. Take heed. Shut up. And listen. And with that, we get the prophecy for the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which it's changed in modern Bible. Virgin, she, you know, she's a young woman. So many things that we've seen here have been changed in the Bible. And that's one of Satan's tasks. He, you don't have God's word, the pure word. King Ahaz needed the pure word of God. He didn't need Isaiah to change it. Battle's coming. Then again, maybe the battle won't come. Maybe you'll hear rumors of battle. Or you might be in one. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It may be outside the Syrians, or it may be in the family with, with Israel. It may be yourself with Ephraim. Because Ephraim is Joseph's son, whose mother is Rachel. Now, who else is in, Ju in Judah? Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin. He's also the son of Rachel. So, Ephraim would be Benjamin's nephew. How's that for an attack? We share the same mother. Well, I mean Rachel. And then you say it's the same mother of the tribe of, 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 of Israel. Rachel. That's what I mean there. I know Joseph and the, and, uh, uh, the, the queen of uh, whatever, the priest of Egypt. But I'm saying as far as the twelve tribes, that same mother, Rachel. And then we run to another prophecy later on. Rachel crying and at the death of all those in Ephraim uh, and Bethlehem. And then we run into next, the virgin birth. And Rachel is also in the prophecy of Bethlehem when Herod comes in and kills those babies. Here you have the, the, the mother of Benjamin who's in Judah and you have Ephraim and Ephraim's cast off.
I mean, it must be heartening to see your 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 family. It must be heartbreaking to have your family go against you in battle to set you down to set them up. And we need to realize that this whole thing is going on in a graveyard. The virgin birth is going to be told in a graveyard. Christ was born to die for our sins. 